be careful who you talk to. Some of my best friends. Yeah, this is our spot. It's in the State Department. We live all over the world. We live all over the country. It was like it was like that. Red, 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 when I was a kid. Hey, they were so good. I was so And I didn't even know I was so They ran up. They ran up. They
morning has broken. Wake us up, shake us up, heal us up, and 
bring your life into us. Walk with us, O oh God, and give us the courage to follow the way that is lit by the fire of your spirit. We confess our tendency to celebrate Pentecost as a past event in history, rather than the present experience in which human hearts and lives touch us by the way of us. We pray for our capacity to try to remain the change. Spirit. 
because Jesus had talked about it. And when we read the Bible in the Old Testament, he even talks about the Spirit there. And although we can't see the person of the Holy Spirit, we can see the effects of the Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit does. And what Jesus said, I want you disciples to all get together. I want you to stay together and pray. And then I will send the Holy Spirit to you. And you'll know when he's come. And you will receive power to be able to live the life that I'm calling you to live. And you will be able to speak God's word like never before. So what happened on Pentecost Sunday is all of a sudden, the wind began to blow through the house. And all of a sudden, they went out into the area close to the temple. And what they saw were like tons of fire that came on each of them. Well, they didn't know what this was, except they thought, this must be the Holy Spirit. Now, these balloons are kind of a, a little bit like tons of fire with the colors because I can imagine what that was like. But ever since then, the Holy Spirit now comes and helps the church, helps us to speak about Jesus. The power of the Holy Spirit lives inside of each of us. Once we've said, Jesus, you're my Savior and my Lord, that way we have the power to live the kind of life that Jesus wants us to live. So today, we're celebrating. We're celebrating Pentecost. So I have these for you to take home. And then I also happen to have a pipe for you to take home too. <laughs> so let us pray. Here we go. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, for sending your Holy Spirit. Even though we can't see him, we are thankful that we can hear him speak to our hearts, that we can feel his presence in our daily lives, and we can see him moving us to do your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> lesson this morning comes from Psalms 104, verses 24 through 35, found on page 941 and 942 in the Bible. We'll read this responsibly, please. How many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is a city of the teeming with creatures beyond number. Living things as large as beside. There the sheep go to and fro, and the Leviathan, which you formed to frolic there. These all look to you to give them their food for our time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their bread, they die and return to dust. When you send your spirit, they are created, and you read the face of the, of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He who looks at the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God all my life. May my meditation be pleasing to him, as I rejoice in the Lord. But the sinners vanish from the earth, and the wicked be no more. Praise the Lord. Our hymn of meditation is number 251, Breathe on me, breath of God. It's 
also the opportunity to give a special offering in the Thanksgiving basket.
our second lesson is taken from the Gospel of John and then also a reading from the Book of Acts. It's on page 1675 and 1676 and then 1692 and 1693. Let us listen to the Word of God. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you such a long time? Anyone who's seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I am doing. He will do even greater things than these, because I'm going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. And you may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. And if you love me, you will obey what I command. And I will ask the Father, who will give you another counselor to be with you forever. The Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him or knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. And now in Acts 2, starting with verse 1. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. And suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. And when they saw and heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hear them in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Thigria and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Christians and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own times. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, make fun of them, and they have had too much wine. But then Peter stood up at the eleven. He raised his voice and he addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is God's word to us today. And now his response says, 
heirs of God, all things are ours. And God makes it possible for us to be generous. So let us not shrink from the greater works to which we're called, but let us respond in creative ways to the possibilities given to us to grow and serve in Jesus' name. So let us present our tithe, our offerings, and our very lives.
that indeed as we continue to meditate upon your word, you will open our eyes to who you are and who we are. That we indeed will hear your voice of love, guidance that the Holy Spirit gives, our counselor, our advisor. And Lord, our prayer is that in, in Ezekiel, that you will remove any hardness in our hearts, hearts of stone, and that you indeed would give us hearts of flesh, that your word would be planted within our hearts, that it would take root and grow and bear good fruit to the glory of your name. And Lord, I pray that the meditation of my heart and the words of my lips will be pleasing unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So as you can see, this is Pentecost Sunday. The day that was promised by Jesus that we find in Acts 1, 4, and 5. As he was getting ready to go to heaven, he, uh, they remembered these words. He says, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift that my Father promised that you've heard me talk about. For John baptized you with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now, we celebrate this, Pentecost, but really it comes from a Greek word, Pentecostos, which means 50th, because we celebrated 50 days after Passover. And it just so happened that this was a festival there that took place in Jerusalem, the Feast of Weeks, or they often called it Pentecost, where they would sacrifice the first fruits of the land or many times the lambs that were the first fruits. And so we hear about the promises of the Holy Spirit. But this is not the first time that we've heard about the Holy Spirit. In fact, we hear about this mysterious person of the Trinity in our first reading in Psalm 104. And it begins with the revelation of God that we see in all of creation. As one commentator says, that we see the manifest riches of God in the creation of the earth and the sea. That this wildly wonderful world all around us is one that God has created, but he also sustains. And in verse 30, it gives us a glimpse where it says, when you send your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. The message says that Jesus said, if you take away the spirit, then we die. We revert to the original mud. <laughs> so send forth your spirit to bring forth life. Send forth your spirit and let the countryside bloom and blossom. And so it's interesting that the church also assigned the scriptures that we've read before in John 14. The words of Jesus repeated again. Jesus reminded them, I'm going to the Father. But I'm sending an advocate, I'm sending a friend, a helper, the spirit of truth who will come and be with you forever. So as the followers of Jesus, they gathered, they prayed, and yet, even with all these words, even with the knowledge of the scriptures, they were quite prepared for the coming of the Holy Spirit. Because you see the sound of a blowing, violent wind, it filled the entire house. The sight of fire, tongues of fire that separated and came upon each of them. 
Now this apparition and manifestation of God is really not new if we, we look at the Old Testament that we would see the revelation of God often that they're called theophanies where the burning bush with Moses what I described last week at the, the giving of the law at Mount Sinai as the mountain thundered and roared in the presence of God but they weren't sure what was really taking place and even those that had gathered from all around the world for the festival of weeks, they said, what does this mean? What is going on? And the best answer they had for this revelation of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, was these people are drunk. They've had too much to drink. But the obvious question is, what? does this mean? And one commentator said, when we look at Pentecost, it's the day that the disciples found their voices. Because as you look back at the disciples, what had they been like just prior to this? They had been afraid when Jesus was arrested. They had abandoned Jesus. He had called them back together. He had breathed on them, told them about the Holy Spirit, advised them again that he was leaving. But now, they were different. They found their voices, and really it wasn't just their voices that they found, or even the voices that the diverse crowd heard. But what was heard was the voice of God speaking through each of them. As they heard their voices, unfamiliar sounds came forth from their mouths. Languages poured forth. It was the words of the Holy Spirit. The appearance of the breath of the Holy Spirit that brought this word to the rest of the world through the disciples. You see, Pentecost was God's way of saying, can you hear me now? Now, many of us remember the commercial for Verizon, and often it's reenacted at my house as William or I are upstairs or downstairs. Can you hear me now? <laughs> that we go to different settings saying, can you hear me now? Pentecost was God's way of saying, can you hear me now? Can you see me now? Can you hear what I am doing on the face of this earth? <laughs> you see, the Holy Spirit came and he came to be the personal interpreter for the disciples at this mysterious event. You see, the Jewish worshipers had come for the festival. But when the Holy Spirit came in power and in might, they heard the disciples praying and speaking in their own languages. That was indeed the first miracle of Pentecost. They heard it not as even, who knows if the disciples were really speaking even in their own languages. Was it a miracle of the hearing of the, those that had gathered? Or was it a miracle of the disciples speaking in a foreign language? We don't know, but what we do know is that it was all very miraculous. And it was God speaking to the entire world. It was the revelation of the Holy Spirit that had come to be our personal interpreter, our personal guide, our advocate, and our friend. 
One that Jesus says, you don't have to pay for an interpreter. He'll dwell within you. And he'll be available to you 24 hours a day, 365 days a week. Pentecost means that we hear the voice of God speaking to us with his interpreter who will help us express our love for Jesus and show the world the impact that Jesus makes in the lives of the believers. But you know, there is a price tag for this interpreter, this personal interpreter. It means that we have to let go of control. It means trusting God and allowing that Holy Spirit to take control of our lives. Now, that can be pretty hard for us. Because you see, we often like to sense that we are in control rather than trusting in the Holy Spirit to be the one forming us, shaping us, and leading us. It actually tells us that in Romans 8, 26, that the Holy Spirit comes to help us in our weakness. And that even when we don't know how to pray or what to pray for, the Holy Spirit himself intercedes for us through our words, our groanings, even our deepest sighs or prayers that the Holy Spirit inspires. So our prayer today is that will we let the Holy Spirit take control of our lives? Will we let the Holy Spirit blow away any of the cobwebs of our selfishness and dust away any of our insensitivities? Now Jesus had said about the Holy Spirit that the wind blows where it pleases. You'll hear its sound. You can't tell where it comes from or where it is going. And so it is with everyone born of the Spirit. Now, I love the fact that many commentators point that Pentecost is the reversal of Genesis 11:4. You see, what had happened that the, the people on earth had gathered. And they had said, let us build a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we can make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we'll be scattered all over the earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the people were building. And he says, if any one people speaking the same language that they have begun to do, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. So let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. You see, the people at the Tower of Babel were wanting to use the presence of God, the gifts of God for themselves. But now at Pentecost, as Jesus has given us a new heart, a new spirit, we allow that spirit to burn away our jealousies and refine and strengthen us. And we no longer focus just on our own desires and accomplishments like the people of Babel did. So this Pentecost, God is speaking to us, speaking to the whole world, and celebrating the triumph of the Holy Spirit. The triumph over differences, the triumph over nationalities, the triumph over languages and classes and races and gender. 
that the Spirit prevails and removes all hindrances. Can you hear me now, God says? Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us with your love. And today we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would open our eyes to see the presence of God all around us. In the stillness of this sacred space, in the busyness of, and noise of our streets, in the joys and celebrations of our lives, in the tragedies and struggles that break our hearts, Come, Holy Spirit. And today we remember and ask for the comfort for all who are grieving. We ask for the peace, God, that only you can bring. That you would stir within us a trust beyond death as we ponder the resurrection of Jesus and the hope of eternal life. Lord, today we remember and ask that your Holy Spirit would come among any of us that are sick, that need your healing touch. We especially pray for Rex and Thomas, those that are on our hearts, those that are members of this church, those in our community. We ask that you would strengthen those who are weak, that you would heal the wounded and broken, that you would give rest to the weary. And Holy Spirit, we ask that you would come, that you would bring peace to the war of the world. Lord, that we would learn to love our enemies, that we would remember the price that you paid for freedom. And help us to care for those who have served to bring about our freedom. But gracious God, we thank you for today and the glimpse of your kingdom that emerges among us. We thank you for your spirit that draws us into new things that you are doing in the world. And it is that your kingdom come, your will be done that we pray as we are filled with your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, today is uh, the day that I like for us to affirm and confess our faith. So in the back of your hymnal is the Apostles' Creed. So please stand and let us confess our faith. I believe in God, God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, Born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. And further day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins. And resurrection of life and the life everlasting. Amen. Our hymn of purpose is number 76, oh, for <laughs>
So go forth, share the good news, the new life available in Jesus. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.
I don't know. I I wanted to get up and open the sleeve on the bench or something. 